Coming in at number 30, Phil Plantier. High fly ball, deep left field. That ball's way back. Home run. Plantier going the other way, a long way from home plate. It's only fitting that the player filling the lowest numerical spot on our list also has the lowest stance. Plantier's exaggerated crouch almost seems too strange to be real, but it was. And it didn't stop him from slugging 91 home runs over eight seasons in the majors. He was also fortunate enough to work with the legendary Ted Williams while playing in the Red Sox minor league system. Perhaps he picked up a trick or two from Teddy Ballgame, who just happens to be the next player on our countdown. Did anybody have, and we never, we know none of us are alive, but did anybody ever have a better batting stance than Ted Williams? Fastball pitches, Williams swings, there's a high drive going deep, deep. It is a home run. That anytime you're in the batter's box, in a relaxed position, in a ready position, in a striding position, in a swinging position, everything should be in balance. Ted has that way, you know, he's sitting there kind of the restless, sort of ready to do, and then that beautiful swing of his, and then boom, you know, out of the park, or the double to the wall, you know, whatever it is. But as far as batting stances are concerned, you're not going to be a baseball genius to look at his and say, ah, that's how I want my kid who bats left-handed. That's the batting stance I want him to emulate. From old school to new school, next up on our list is 2020 World Series champion Cody Bellinger. When I first saw Cody come into the league, it's a unique batting stance, very erect, and he has that way of see where he's looking straight at the pitcher, a unique batting approach. You know, I think as a kid, as long as everyone, I don't remember like working on my swing. I would just like go in the cage and just try to hit the ball, you know. I didn't even work on it in high school, really. I was just going out there and swinging, so um, I don't know. I just always picked up a bat, and that's what felt most comfortable. Well, the hips go first, and the shoulders and the hands stay back, and that creates that torque through the midsection, and that launches the bat. Just, I don't know, man, just like the comfortability of it is just way more comfortable to me. Um, getting bad habits when it's over here and just not completely natural to me, and I've always been, you know, wiggling it this way, so just try to get back to that and still making adjustments. Coming in at number 27, it's another Boston Red Sox legend, Carl Yastrzemski. Carl Yastrzemski, without a doubt. In fact, I used that all through high school, all through the minor leagues, and up until uh, my first full season in the major leagues, up until the All-Star break. That was my memory oh, sure. of Carl, yeah. how high he used to hold the bat. I mean, touch of the sky. Yeah, and that was very early in his career. That was actually the 67 year, the Impossible Dream Team. Yeah. I mean, he was way up here with the bat. Listen, whether you hit right-handed or left-handed, kids my age, 55 and above, probably 60, they all emulated Yaskrimski. With the bat high, everybody that I knew growing up playing Little League Baseball emulated the great Yaz. One of the most universally beloved players of the century, Prince Fielder made his money via the long ball. Fielder lays into one. Deep right center field. Prince Fielder! A walk-off winner! I just remember, like, just a stocky guy. He was on the, on the plate um, and just, like, had a little bit of waggle, and it was very simple. And I, the thing that stands out to me is, like, the finish. Like, he did the, it was like a lean-back finish is, is what stood out to me.